Ohio, we got a unit on weather. And what a great way to do a unit on weather with like the weatherman with a map behind me. But you know, you gotta be careful when you use maps like these. You gotta make sure that they're from NOAA. That is the government organization. In other words, there's no copyright. This is public domain, like the things from NASA. And usually oftentimes you see things from NASA down in the little corner over here. There'll be uh, the logo for NASA, and we could have the logo or whatever, but just saying the fact this is a NOAA satellite photograph takes care of that part. Now, our unit on weather is going to be in four parts, is obvious. The first part is going to be on general Earth weather formations, and then we're going to go into uh, fronts, cold fronts, warm fronts. And then we're going to, third lesson is going to be on cloud types, and in the fourth lesson, since we originate this from South, beautiful South Florida here, we are going to be discussing about hurricanes. So those are our four units of study. So let's begin now with lesson number one. And I wanted to start with this awesome satellite photograph. Do you understand what you've got here, kids? This is a photograph by a satellite that's in space, looking down on the Earth. It's locked. In other words, the satellite does not drift. It stays right here. Are you aware of the fact that that satellite must be at 22,000 miles above the Earth's surface, so it locks on. So what we have here then is, this is right here, of course, is the corner of the Earth. That's the actual shape of the Earth. See, it's kind of like a ball shape. It's not, though. Remember that? The Earth is not a ball shape. It's a pear shape. It's like most of us, you know, a little larger around the middle. So anyway, we got this awesome picture here in the United States. Mexico, Central America, and there's even South America down here at the bottom. Now, I know you got the white stuff. You know, of course, that means clouds. But it's really awesome about this. Now, if you, if you have cable, you can watch the Weather Channel. If you have computer and you got Internet capabilities, then you can go on to the NOAA, NASA weather sites, or just the Weather Channel, and you'll add local channel. TVs will have it. And they'll you have this on the screen for you to look at. And this is what I'm here to tell you today. We're going to learn to predict the weather five to seven days in advance, and you're almost going to be 100% accurate. You say, wait, wait, wait a minute. No one has been able to predict the weather accurately as that. Oh, yes. All you've got to learn here in these four lessons is how the Earth goes through its different trends. For example, there was a trend, uh, you remember the very popular thing called El Nino? Remember, everybody's blaming it on El Nino. So if your mom was upset, it was because of El Nino and all that. So that's a trend. And though that wasn't always here, it developed and moved on, and we've got something else going on as the weather changes. Uh, we like to say the weather almost goes like in a cycle. So what we're going to do is find out how we can predict this weather. In fact, you ready for this heavy part? And number four, when we get to hurricanes, I will actually show you how to predict the path of hurricanes. And I've been doing this for... 35, 40 years, and I've never missed it yet. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying if you read it correctly, you'll know where the hurricanes are coming. And I usually know the hurricanes when they're out here in a place called Puerto Rico and, and a little beyond that. I mean, uh, that's A-OK -okay because that's where you can start predicting anywhere from three to five to seven days in advance for hurricane direction. But we'll save that for lesson four. Let's get back to this now. All right. Anyone would know that this represents a front. Now, what is a front? A front is where you have air coming down like this, pushing air that's down here, which is trying to come up. Now, why does this have to go up and why does this have to go down? The reason is really simple. The Earth turns. Duh, did you know that? The Earth turns. In fact, uh, in the tropics or subtropic area right along in here, we're actually traveling at 1,000 miles per hour in that direction. That's a thousand miles per hour. You don't feel it. Maybe that's why the wind blows. No, 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 no. You see, a thousand miles per hour, if you could jump up and stay in one place for an hour and you come back down, it won't be the same place because the earth has turned underneath you. Now, that's a lot of power, kids. And with that tremendous amount of power, that's why you got this stuff moving across the earth. If clouds get low to the ground, they rub against the earth and the ground, it slows them down. We usually call that a certain type of front. And if the air is high above the earth and racing across the top, then it can go a lot faster. So this white belt right here, we all know it means clouds, all right? And if you've seen a lot of the weather programs, you know, they put the blues and the greens and the, and the reds for severe weather. And that simply means you have a lot of activity occurring. 
like rain and snow. So this belt is something really awesome. This is called the jet stream. If I was an airplane pilot and I was taking off here from, well, let's say California, and I wanted to go to New York City, you know what they do? To save gasoline, well, fuel for the airplane, and also to get to New York maybe sooner, they come down here in their airplane and they catch this jet stream, and the jet stream is right here. This marks the jet stream. And so they take the jet stream and they fly, see it, to New York. Isn't that neat? No, so what does that mean? Well, first of all, the jet stream travels anywhere from five upwards to 600 miles an hour. Sometimes it only travels 200 miles an hour. The speed of the jet stream, I haven't described you what the jet stream is, but let's keep it simple now, all right? You can always go to the library and go on the internet and get the details, but let's keep this kind of simple for you. If this thing is moving at 200 miles per hour and you take your airplane and get into that, it's going to help take you to New York. Now, you're not too smart if you leave New York and come this way <laughs> to go to Southern California because you're fighting the wind, so you don't want to do that. All right, so what this is, kids, is the jet stream. Now, the jet stream is like a wave, and we'll talk about that just in a few minutes. But this is the wave of the jet stream. Now, the jet stream is going like this, the way it is curved. But now, look, we got something down here. It even comes across down here a little bit. This is another jet stream. Sometimes the jet stream will break in half. You'll have a lower jet stream, lower latitude, and higher jet stream. It'll break in two pieces. Then we have this one. This is what controls a lot of the weather for Florida. This is called the subtropical jet stream. Sometimes it comes up this far. Sometimes it comes up to about this line here. And during the times of the uh, ferocious El Nino, and we had a lot of uh, bad weather conditions in this part of Florida, that's where the subtropical jet stream was. But on this particular NOAA photograph, you can see it right over this area. Now, where does the subtropical jet stream really belong? Down here. But it's a wave. Now, a wave means, you know, you can do this. See? So the wave has come up into South Florida, and then it'll drop down. Then the wave comes up like this again. Now, the wave just doesn't stay right here. No, 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 no. Remember? The Earth turns. So the wave will move right across the United States. Now, I mean, can you see where the top of the wave is? Now, where's the bottom part of the wave? It's right there. See it? Isn't that neat? So here it's a very large wave. This jet stream goes all the way around the Earth. It just doesn't go across the United States. It goes all the way around the Earth. And it's a giant wave that goes back and forth. Now, why is it there? I'm glad you asked that. Cold air is coming down from up north. In fact, it actually comes most of the time out of Alaska. But then we have the Alberta uh, Clipper, which comes out of central Canada. they got names for all this stuff, El Ninos and all that stuff. But most of the cold weather comes out of Alaska. And it comes down because above the Earth, there's air, gets cold, and the air comes down because cold air comes down. And where does it come down? It has to come down at the North and the South Poles. So as the air comes down, think of water being poured on top of the Alaska. All right? Alaska pretty soon is going to have too much air coming down, and it's going to overflow. And this is it. So if enough cold air comes down, it moves into the United States. Then the cold air meets the jet stream. And the jet stream is what designs the wave, or gives this front its formation. See, this whole thing's coming down like this. Right in here we have a situation. It's, we'll talk about that in lesson three, or, or whatever.